how much do you think about international trade? If you're like most people, until a few weeks ago, you didn't really think about it very much at all. But as of a few weeks ago, Donald Trump started putting all sorts of tariffs on all sorts of countries around the world, and now people are talking about international trade nonstop. And in the latest Bamboo Weekly, I asked you to analyze data about international trade from the United Nations, from their ComTrade database. We can go to their ComTrade database portal and download all sorts of information. I asked you to download information from about 10 different countries that we can see their goods going in and out in both 2019 and 2024. So here are the problems that I asked you to solve, but notice, I asked you to solve them using Pandas, but not in a standard Jupyter notebook. Rather, I asked you to use Marimo, which is a new kind of notebook that kind of builds on Jupyter's ideas and uh, um, sort of traditions, but has all sorts of cool functionality that I want to demonstrate and that I hope you'll get exposed to through these problems. So the first thing after setting up Marimo is, and starting it, I'm gonna import Marimo as MO, and then I have here a, uh, a markdown cell where I'm gonna describe the problem, start a Marimo notebook, done, import the data into a data frame. Now, I did ask you to download it as Excel data for a whole variety of reasons. I'm gonna do it here into CSV. So I'm gonna say file name equals, we'll say users, Ruben, Bamboo Weekly, and then we'll say here notebooks, and we'll say data, I'll say trade data.csv. And then I'll say df equals pd, oops, pd. So I'll get that over there. And then read CSV of my file name. But that's not enough because I did say I only want to keep the columns, well, these columns. I'm going to copy these from my notes so I don't have to bore you typing all this sort of stuff. File name, comma, use causes, all that stuff. And I will indeed get those columns. And that will give me all the rows from the file and these two, four, five columns. But I also ask you to remove any rows in which the partner desk column is world. So I will read CSV. I will get that back as a data frame. And then I'll use dot lock and lambda of DF to say DF of partner desk should not be equal to world. What does this do? Well, basically this says, give me that data frame, but then go through each row and where partner desk is not equal to world return true. And because dot lock can work with a Boolean series or a Boolean index, as we often call it, only those rows where it is true will actually give us back a value. And now I get back this data frame and I look at it in DF. Oh, I have to load pandas first. That would help import pandas as PD. All right, and now it loads pandas, it loads the data, voila. And we see now we have five row, uh, five columns. We see the column names, we see the column types, we see some basic information about them, min, max, unique, and so forth. But we also see, what is this, 10 rows here in our data frame. That's kind of nice. But look, we can page through them little by little with this little pagination tool. I can even download the data frame into either CSV or JSON format. That's pretty snazzy. Pretty great stuff. Okay, so... I have this data and I'm looking at what else did I ask you to do? Well, without using any code, sort the rows by the fob value column. What do you mean sort the rows without using any code? Because I know how to use sort values. I know how to do all sorts of stuff using pandas. How can I sort without using it? And the answer is if you click on the title here, look at this. See, I click on the title and it gives me a little pop-up menu. And I can say desk, I want to get it in descending order. And now we see all the rows sort in descending order from the top to the bottom by FOB value. So the largest amount traded between two countries, according to this database, is, what is it, $358 billion that the United States imports from Mexico. The next highest would be the U.S. exporting to Canada, and so on and so forth. And this is part of the beauty of Marimo, that I can read in my data and then experiment with it and play with it without having to actually run additional queries. So which country imports the greatest dollar amount of products and from where? We've seen that, now it's the US. Okay, on to question two. So I said define n to be 10. So that's pretty easy, I say n equals 10, done. And then I say create a bar plot showing the n countries from which the US imported the most in 2024 and the FOB value. All right, so how am I gonna do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to use my method chart and say DF. I'm going to use some locks and lambdas here. In fact, I'm going to copy this again so you don't have to see everything all over again typed. All right. So lock and lambda, ref year is 2024. Lock and lambda, reporter desk is USA. Lock and lambda, flow desk equals equals import. And this means that I'm going to get only reports about the US 
importing in 2024. If I do this, if I just run this, I get a data frame back. That's great, but that's not exactly what I want. I only want part of this data. I want to know from which countries did we import the most into the United States. So how am I going to do that? Well, I can first of all say dot set index of partner desk, and then I can retrieve it with just fob value. And now you see that I have this index here on the left of the country names, and I have the fob value, I have the values. And this is for all of the countries in the world, how much the US is importing from each of them. Yeah, but I don't want all of them. I just want the t I just want the 10 largest. Actually, I don't even want the 10 largest. I want the n largest. So I can in fact run dot n largest. And how many? I want n. Where is this n coming from? It's coming up from up here, this variable that I set. So if I do that, I will get the 10 countries from which the US imports the most. And even says now page one of one. So we know it's only 10. That's pretty great. And can I do the same thing? for exporting? Yeah, absolutely. Instead here, I just say flow desk is export. And I run that and I get that list, but that's not what I wanted. I asked for a bar plot. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to say dot plot dot bar kablam. And I get now 10 different countries and how much the US imported from them. I go down here and I say dot plot dot bar and I get the 10 countries to which the US exported the most. Okay, so far, pretty standard for what we would do with a Jupyter Notebook. Here's where get th things get wild. If I change this to be five and I execute this cell, it automatically, immediately reruns the queries in any cells that use the variable n and thus redoes the plot. So if I now say, actually, I want the top 20, done. I want the top 50, done. I want the top two, done. It's kind of silly looking, right? So I can change this around. I don't have to worry about any hidden state behind the scenes that, well, you know, I might forget about. Here's an even cooler thing. I did not ask you to do this. I've already imported Marimo as MO. And MO or Marimo comes with a whole bunch of UI widgets. So what if I say here, not n equals 10, but n equals, I'm going to say mo.ui.slider from 1 to 50. And then I'm going to display n. What is that going to give me? Well, it's going to say now that n is no longer an integer. n is now this UI widget. And that UI widget is a slider. It's going to allow me to slide back and forth. Well, that's not really useful yet because a slider is not an integer. So when I say n largest of n, uh, that's not going to work. In fact, it doesn't work. But if I say n dot value, and if I say here n dot value, now I'm getting the value from the slider. And now as I slide it up and up and up, it's just going to update my plot to however many I indicated. That's pretty snazzy. All right. I went through a whole bunch of Marimo things here, a whole bunch of uh, uh, Pandas things here. I would love to hear what you have to say, feedback, suggestions, and ideas. Leave them in the comments. Let me know what more you want to learn about Python and Pandas here on YouTube and in Bamboo Weekly. And I'll be back soon with lots more instruction on Python and Pandas and everything in between. See you soon.